Poly FX Strategies of Rabobank. Good morning, Jane, and thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. So, Jane, let me kick off very quickly, very, very quickly with foreign exchange. Talk to us about a dollar dynamics and what are your expectations in terms of euro dollar in the near to medium term? Well, what we've seen is that the, the dollar has been gaining uh, some ground against the euro this morning. Now, I want to put this in perspective because if we look back across the course of the whole week or so, uh, what we've seen is G10 FX markets not moving all of that much. Certainly, we've seen big movements in commodity prices, big movements in bond yields, uh, but not so much in G10 FX. But we have got the dollar picking up ground this morning, the dollar index uh, and the dollar gaining ground against the euro too. Now, of course, it is the commodity currencies that are still looking really quite perky today, the Australian dollar, the Canadian dollar, the New Zealand dollar as, as well, uh, all looking quite firm. And that, of course, uh, makes sense given what's happening to commodity prices right now. But the dollar is a significant safe haven. A lot of invoicing is still done in US dollars around the world, not least in commodity prices. And whilst there have been efforts by Russia to try and avoid circumvent uh, the, the dollar over uh, recent years, same with uh, China, even the EU, uh, it is likely that as long as these uh, news headlines about the, the about Ukraine about the war in Ukraine that continue to, to worsen it is likely that the dollar will remain well on the other side, uh, we saw some remarks of the Fed chair, uh, and he sees interest rate hikes coming, but noted that the Russia-Ukraine war has injected uncertainty into the outlook. So uh, let's imagine that we're going to see at least 25 basis points increase in the, f in, in the upcoming weeks. I was wondering, what does this mean uh, for the greenback, if we have to put it into perspective, medium-term perspective? Well, of course, uh, some of the economics has taken a back seat. And what we've seen over the, the past week is for a variety of major central banks, the market has pulled back on the amount of interest rate hikes that, that are expected. So, yes, the Fed is ex still expected to hike interest rates during the course of this year, as are uh, some other uh, major central banks, uh, such as the Bank of England and the Bank of Canada. Uh, but the market isn't expecting that to be as much as they were. If we look at it, what the impact of energy prices, commodity prices is, yes, they increase inflation. But they actually also serve as a growth risk as we spend more of our money on food and on the necessities uh, such as energy. We have less money in our pockets for everything else. And that means demand goes down, growth will go down. So in a, if you like, some of these uh, uh, energy price rises, for instance, act in the same way as a tax increase would. And, and they take, they drain money uh, from our pockets. So this is the risk that central bankers are looking at, at the risk of increased inflation, but simultaneously potentially slower growth. And, and this markets and central bankers are coming to terms with uh, right now. Uh, Jane, I was wondering what's your take on uh, today, of course, we saw uh, Eurozone inflation data, which was way, way above expectations. And, and I think the ECB is in a very delicate situation from one side, as I said, uh, we have a, a, a military conflict uh, in Ukraine and, and then a major surge in commodity prices. And, and this is going to be a major consequence, of course, for inflationary pressure. So what do you think the ECB is going to do and what would you suggest uh, at this point in order to calm inflationary pressures? Uh, well, of course, if you look at the inflation data today, yes, it was firm and the likelihood is, is that we are now looking at inflation which is going to be higher for longer across the Eurozone than perhaps we were expecting even a week or so ago. And this is, of course, because of energy prices and, and food prices too. Now, the ECB will be aware that this is a growth risk to the Eurozone too, that demand can shrink on the back of that. But what they don't want to see are secondary inflation uh, uh, expectations rising, wages uh, coming through, because this gives them uh, uh, the potential of a wage price spiral, which is what they want to avoid. So they will be working to try and contain inflation expectations and that may mean that they may still have to, to tighten policy. But at this stage, I think we can expect uh, some caution uh, from European central bankers. Uh, so you think it's going to be way behind in terms of tightening and, of course, um, raise policies compared to the, to, to the Fed and Bank of England? Yes, I think that's that, that's definitely the case, and certainly with the Bank of England, uh, the market and ourselves have been anticipating that there was perhaps too much in the price uh, uh, last week. So we've had some Bank of England officials this week talk about front loading interest rate hikes, maybe uh, uh, going again uh, uh, once or so more, but uh, really then playing it carefully uh, to, uh, into the rest of the year as demand gets uh, uh, pushed lower by those higher food and uh, energy prices. 
Thank you very much. Jane Foley, FX Strategies, Rabobank, thank you for joining us and have a great day ahead. Thank you.